you're like me, you struggle making decisions sometimes. There's too many options, there's too many ways that you can choose wrong, at least that's how I think. Um, so this app actually helps you make better decisions. It's called Decision Crafting. So I have just these four pizza places just to make a silly choice of choosing pizza, but you could do this for a much more uh, difficult uh, decision. Um, so what you do is you have your uh, options, in my case four pizza places, and then you give them some characteristics. So I did toppings, crust, cheese, and price. And then I'm gonna rate these on a scale of one to 10. And I also weighted these, so like I, um, chose how important crust is to me, how important cheese is to me, and so these ratings factor into that as well. So if I'm giving cheese a 7 out of 10 and maybe cheese is really important to me, that would weigh higher. So I do this for all four, tap the check mark, and then it's basically going to make the decision for me. So in my case, Jets is where I should get pizza. Um, but obviously you could do something much more complicated like where to go to college or what to do about a job, things like that. Instagram recently made it possible to upload multiple images to the same post as a gallery. And one of the cool things you can do with that is upload a panorama. This app called InstaSwipe does it for you. So all you're going to do is you're going to open up a panorama. I have this panorama of a bowling alley here. And you can choose how many images you want it to be cut up into. So if I do two to one, you can see that is a better use of space than if I have a three by one. So I'm gonna do two by one. I'm gonna tap the check mark to be okay. It's gonna process this and crop the photo. So then we're gonna save it and then we're gonna open Instagram. And now I just wanna make a post and I'm gonna choose multiple from my gallery. And now when I swipe through here, oops, I put them in the wrong, I put them in the wrong, <laughs> I put them in the wrong order. Uh, but the idea is if I put them in the right order, uh, they would be seamlessly connected and it would be able to scroll through it like a real panorama. There are a million note-taking apps in the Play Store, so why not another one? Uh, this one's called Notely, and the cool thing about this one is you can take notes in three different ways. You can do a simple text note, you can do an audio voice note, or you can even do a video note. And all of these notes you can add hashtags to to find easily. So I have a few that I've made up here. So buy groceries, I tagged food. And if I tab the food, it's gonna show me all the uh, notes that I made under that tag. Uh, and then you can also separate it by the type. So here's all the text notes, here's all my audio notes, here's all my video notes. Um, but other than that, it's just a simple note-taking app if that's something you're interested in, this is a nice one to check out. Netflix has a huge library of content now, and that's great, but it can be hard to find something to watch sometimes, especially if you're not in the mood for something specific, like a specific movie that you're looking for, you just wanna browse for something. An app called Upflix has a cool tool to help you find stuff. So first and foremost though, it shows you um, what's new in Netflix and what's expiring so that you can watch stuff before it leaves and you can see what's new. Um, but the really neat thing is you tap this little button in the bottom and this is called the roulette wheel. And so let's select a genre, let's say I'm in the mood for a comedy. And then you can choose a rating, so anything uh, above a 3 rating on Netflix, a 4 rating on IMDb, and a 70 on Rotten Tomatoes. Then we're going to spin the wheel and Slums of Beverly Hills is what it comes up with. And so I can read about that movie, and if I wanna play it, just tap the play button, and it's gonna open right into the Netflix app. So this is a really cool app for finding great stuff to watch on Netflix. Have you ever been driving somewhere and you don't know what the speed limit is and you can't find any speed limit signs? Velociraptor is an app that overlays the posted speed and your current speed over the top of whatever maps app you're using. So I'm using Google Maps, uh, but also works with Waze, pretty much any other app that you want. Uh, and it shows the posted speed, your speed limit, and it can even give you a warning if you are going faster than the speed limit. The app is free and it works pretty cool. There's a subreddit on Reddit called Writing Prompts, and basically what it is is people will like pitch an idea for a story basically, and then other Redditors will come along and finish the story, they'll write short stories about it. Writing Prompts is an app that lets you read those stories. It's a really cool reader. So you can see here, these are the, the prompts. So these are like the premise of the story. And so we go into one of these, um, we have the prompt at the top of the screen and underneath are all the stories that people have written based on that prompt. So tap into one 
And a cool thing that it does is as you tap, it reveals parts of the story. So we tap once, next line. Tap again, next line. And so you can read the story kind of like one paragraph at a time. Uh, if you want, you can just long press and it'll hold this whole story. Um, but then you can swipe to the right to see a next one. So if you like reading short stories, uh, this is a really cool app. Tons of short stories in here to read. So most Android keyboards have some type of spell check or autocorrect built in, um, but sometimes it doesn't work as well as you want it to. Autocorrect especially can be super annoying sometimes. Uh, an app called GrammarPal adds built in spell check to whatever app you're using, whatever keyboard you're using. Here's a note that I made in Google Keep. And if I tap into here to bring up the keyboard, you can see this little floating green bubble. And I tap that, it's gonna spell check everything that I have typed in the text box. And then it shows two errors here, so I tap that. And now I can copy it, or I can go back to the app. And if I copy it, it's gonna work just like you would expect. Long press, paste, there we go. Or I could just go into it and make the corrections myself. The cool thing about it is it works in any app that you're using. And there are some settings here so you can um, change what app the uh, floating button pops up. So maybe there's like a text messaging app that you don't need it for. Um, you can adjust the language, you can change the theme, or you can have some ignored rules for things that maybe you don't want it to be correct. Status is an aptly named app that allows you to customize the look of the status bar without root. And it looks a little wonky here on my phone because I have Android O. Um, but once I turn it on, you can see that it turned red and blue. That's because I have the default status bar color to red, but you could change it to something like purple. There we go. Um, and you can change how the icons appear. So I have them with blue. Let's go in the opposite direction and go red. And so there we go. You can adjust a lot of these things. So you could make the status bar change color depending on what app you're using. You can also adjust the color of all the icons. Um, specific apps could show up as different colors. There's a ton of different customization that you can do in this app, and it works great without root, which is really cool, and it's free. Unconnectify is an app that allows you to schedule when certain system things will turn on or off, like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So maybe every day at a certain time, you want your Wi-Fi to turn off, and at a certain time to turn back on. You do the same from Bluetooth. I don't know why you would do that, but you can do it. And so all you do is you select a time. So let's do 153, okay. And then you select what you want it to work with. So right now Wi-Fi is enabled. I can turn on Wi-Fi hotspot and I can turn on Bluetooth. And it's just for Friday right now, but I could do uh, Saturday as well. Um, and it's uh, enabled right now, but if I slide over and I turn off, that means that at that time, all those things are gonna turn off. Um, and if I change it back to on, this means that at that time, all those things are gonna turn on. And so you can set up a schedule here and it will work every day at a specific time. Pretty cool. Um, once again, not sure why you would need it, but if you're someone who wants something like this, this is a good app to do. It's almost impossible to read Wikipedia and not get sent down a wormhole of just random articles that are all linked together. This game takes that into advantage. So the idea is you start with a Wikipedia page and I have to see how many steps it can take to get to a different Wikipedia page. So I'm gonna start with Lentil here and I have to get to Lao, which is a country. Tap play. And it's just gonna display the full Wikipedia page as I would see on the web. And it's my choice to see where I should go to get to the target word. Now it can take a while, so I'm not gonna show you this, um, but as an example, previously I started with kale and I had to get to apricot and it took me seven steps. So you just, once you, you know, you tap on a page, now it takes me here, that's one step. Uh, you can open up all these things, go here, that's two steps. You get the idea. So uh, you can learn while you're playing this game because you can read the Wikipedia articles um, and see how good you are at using Wikipedia. Papery Plains is just a simple, endless uh, flyer game, I guess you would call it. Um, all you're gonna do is just go left and right through these obstacles. You're flying over a river. You have to go through uh, like rocky tunnels like that and collect these coins. And these coins can be used to upgrade your plane to make it better and better. I didn't do very well there. My best is 206. Um, but it's just a, a simple premise. You've probably played games like this. It has a really cool low poly design. It's a minimalist UI and it's easy to play. It takes up some time if you need to kill a few minutes and it's free. 
Jelly Ink is a one-touch platformer retro style game. Um, so we'll just get into a game here and you're just a little jelly blob and all you do is you tap to jump. And he's just gonna keep going through these little tubes to go level to level. Oh, I just hit a saw there. Um, you just basically go as long as you can. Um, so my record appears to be five levels. Uh, dang, I have a hard time missing those saws. Let's try one more time. Saws right here. Oh, it's a moving one. Juice. Oh, all right. I think you get the idea. If you're better at this game than I am, it lasts longer. Uh, but you just go through the level after level and you avoid the obstacles for as long as you can. It's called Jelly Ink. Turning is a very interesting puzzle game. Uh, so at the top of the screen here, you'll see these two little lines that form kind of an arrow pointing to the left. Um, so that's the shape that I have right now to lay on the board. And what happens is when you lay that on the board, a ball is gonna come out in the direction that it's pointing. So I put it right here, and then it's gonna go to the next shape, and the shape that catches the ball always goes one move to clockwise, and then it passes the ball on. And what you can see is that these arrows are different colors. So for example, the one right in the middle there, the one side is dark blue, the one side is light blue. And this shows how many hits the arrows have taken. You wanna get it to all light blue, and then the arrow will disappear from the board. So for example, if I put this arrow right here, you can see it's gonna pass it, and now that arrow lost part of its dark blue color. And so that one's gonna need two more. The idea is to get the ball so that it keeps going to the arrows and stays on the board a long time. Um, so let's see if I can, so here we go, pass up. Not really a great move. Um, here we go. So now it'll turn, that one's gonna turn. Now it's gonna keep passing it. And so all of those took a hit and they're one closer to being removed from the board. So let's try this again. Okay, here we go. So now that one is completely out of turns and it disappears from the board. And so basically you just wanna to try to remove as much from the board as you can because when the board fills up, the game's over and you will get special items like bombs and um, mirrors that will reflect the ball and stuff like that. But it's a very interesting puzzle game. Amino is a puzzle matching game. Um, so the idea here is to match chains of the same color rings, but there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, you can see these blue and these yellow rings that have the green dots inside. That means that as soon as I get rid of those rings, they're gonna be replaced with the color inside. So once I make this yellow string of three here, you can see that that was replaced by a green icon. And that's the trick to this game is you wanna plan your moves ahead so that when you have those icons show up, they make sense into what you're trying to do. Because when this board gets full and there's no more moves to make, that's when the game's over. So we'll move this yellow guy over here, uh, orange over there, blue, I can get that there. Okay, now we got a blue string, orange over here, and we can get another yellow string, uh, figure that out. Lots of green in this map. Um, and this is basically all you do, but it's gonna get a lot harder as you go because um, rings aren't gonna be placing as neatly as you'd want. Um, you're gonna have colors on their own and uh, the board will fill up pretty quick, trust me. But it's fun and it's addictive and it's free, so check it out. Zig is a game all about zigging and zagging. Um, so you do this little dot and every time you touch, uh, you zig in the opposite direction. And the goal is to get these circles that are in the middle of the spinning circles. So you gotta get in there and it's tough because you don't wanna hit the spinner. There we go, Whoop, can't make it in there. Nice. I have this little uh, immunity right now. Okay, now I have a magnet, so they're all sucked into me. This is my high score by a lot. Oh, there, it ended. Um, but you get the idea. It's basically just, uh, you gotta get into these circles without uh, hitting the obstacles, um, which is pretty tricky, unless you can get some of the cool power-ups like I had. Um, it's called Zig, and it's super easy to play, and it's super fun.